I'm Jim Fisk. And I'm Stephanie Luz. And we're huge fans of Svelte. We love how you can compose different components that are lightweight in an interactive way to build sites and apps. So one thing that the CMS world had right was the theming. And the theming, you could just pull it in, use the components, extend the theme. You can do all sorts of things. And right now, I kind of feel like we have to start from scratch. So we've been thinking about this a lot in a project that we maintain called Plenty, which is an open source static site generator for Svelte. And we think we have an innovative solution that will help you with your theming needs. You know what? Why don't you just come dream with us? I'm working on creating a theme in Plenty currently. It's called Roxo, and I'm porting it from a Hugo theme designed by Static Mania. It's a great starting point for creative agencies, freelancers, graphic designers, and photographers to use as a portfolio website. The cool thing about building themes in Plenty is that it's no different than building a regular Plenty site. Every site you build in Plenty can be used as a starting point or theme for any other Plenty site. You can inherit content, assets like images and documents, and structured HTML defined in Svelte components from a theme. Let's start a new blank site and pull this theme in to demonstrate how you could use something like this in your own projects. All you need to do is install Plenty since there is no other dependencies like Node.js or Golang required. I already have Plenty installed, so I can use the command line utility to get started. I'll type plenty new site, then name my new project, my site, and finally point it to the theme I started previously by using the theme flag and setting that equal to the git URL for the project. This will create project scaffolding that has already pulled the latest version of my theme in and configured routes to work with the intended architecture. It's the easiest way to get up and running using themes. I'll just open the site in my text editor to make it easier to see the project files. Then I'll start my local web server using the command tool again and typing plenty serve. If I open the URL in my browser, you can see that we have a fully functioning site using my theme. Now, if I wanted to update content, I could simply copy the corresponding JSON file from the parent theme to my project. By default, an empty project inherits everything from the theme. You can override any theme file by creating a project file with the exact same name. So I'll grab the index.json file from my theme, which corresponds to the home page content, and I'll place this in the content folder of my project. Once you do that, the project file takes precedence, so I can make edits to it and then they will be reflected on my site. I'll update the title, so instead of saying that we're a design studio, it will say, hello Svelte Summit. You can see that change reflected on the front end of the website. That's how themes work in a nutshell. Now, I'll hand it over to Jim to discuss some of the mechanics that are happening behind the scenes. Thanks, Steph. That was a great demo, and it's probably the most common way most people will use themes. It's great for people who want to use an existing site as a starting point, but they need the ability to customize it for their own needs while still having the ability to pull in upstream changes from the original theme if bug fixes or new features are rolled out. However, you can actually pull themes into an existing project as well. You might be able to do this if you have a base project that you're already working on, but would like to extend it by pulling in components from a different source. Use the plenty theme add command and point it to a git URL like this to pull in the latest version of that theme. Just remember, if you want routing, base URLs, or local build options to inherit from your theme too, you'll have to manually update your site-wide plenty.json configuration file to match your theme's configuration file. You also have to enable the theme in order for it to be used, which you can do by simply typing plenty theme enable and then the name of your theme. You might also want to omit certain aspects of your theme. For instance, if you're only interested in using a theme as a component library to extend an existing project, in your plenty.json configuration file, you can specifically exclude these so your project builds without them. In this example, I'll exclude all content and assets, so I just get the layouts pulled into my project. If you want a specific version of a theme, you can pass in an optional commit flag and grab the specific hash you want. This is handy if your project requires that you use an older version of Plenty for some reason and newer versions of the theme break your builds, or if you simply do not like the changes implemented in newer versions of the theme. If your theme does become out of date, 
You can always update to the newest version using plenty theme update or grab a specific version using the optional commit flag again. Another thing that you should notice is that there are no git submodule headaches to worry about. In other projects, sometimes people struggle using themes because when it comes to deployment time, the theme files are missing from their repository. In Plenty, we handle all the git magic behind the scenes, so your theme files just track with your project like normal, while still retaining versioning information for updates using the git commit. You can also use Plenty themes without using git at all. This comes in handy if you want to build a theme from scratch into your base project, but the theme doesn't exist elsewhere, like in a remote repository. This means you could download themes from places that aren't using version control at all, like Dropbox or Google Drive, without any problems. Themes downloaded in this way and manually put into a project will behave the same way as a normal theme, you just lose the ability to use the command line tool to scan for updates and specify versions. If you have multiple themes you've downloaded, in order to try them out, you can switch between them by disabling the active theme, for example, plenty theme disable red squares, and enabling another theme like plenty enable green squares. If you want to completely remove a theme, you can simply run plenty theme remove in the name of the theme. This will clean it from your file system and remove the corresponding theme config settings from your plenty.json file. It's also worth mentioning that themes can nest multiple layers deep. There's no limit to how many levels they can nest, but at some point your repository will become very large and you might notice performance degradation if you abuse this to the nth degree. The builds are all done in memory using a virtual file system provided by a project called Afero, so they should be pretty fast in general. An example where you might see multiple layers of nested themes would be if a parent theme is a simple component library or grid framework that focuses on layout, and a child theme leverages those layouts and adds aesthetic elements like fonts and colors, and your base project is simply customizing the content and images. So there you have it, the best of both worlds, Svelte and themes working together in perfect harmony so your websites can stay lightweight and interactive while allowing you to avoid having to reinvent the wheel constantly. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your sessions at the summit.